heavy duty. Alrighty guys, it's Alec Agar coming back to you with another YouTube video. We are out in the shop working on the uh, Turbo GMC. Got a list of things that I'm going to try and accomplish today. Um, but thanks for being here. Thanks for watching the video. And I appreciate the recent subscriptions and some of the recent support on the uh, dual piston rear brake upgrade that we did. So today I got the whiteboard behind me. I got three things on the board that I want to knock out right away. And then we'll see how long that takes us and where we can get after that. But uh I want to get the rear brake lines finished up and sealed up so that we can bleed the brake system on this truck. Um, the next one is the front drive shaft. I'd like to get it painted because it's rusty and it's just kind of out of place right now underneath the nice painted truck that looks relatively good. And then I'd like to get all the clamps on the cold side um, and all the intercooler piping up front. So I'm just going to do a little underneath the truck here. You can see here's our front drive shaft. It kind of looks out of place just because it's rusty and the rest of the truck isn't really rusty. So we're going to throw a little KBS rust coating on that and make it look good. So we're going to get to work. See you guys in a little bit. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, kind of got carried away with myself here and uh, basically got nothing done because I expanded the scope on what I was trying to accomplish today. All right, so I had Bailey here helping me and uh, he knocked out getting the drive shaft painted as I was working on the rear brakes. Um, so drive shaft is painted. We got the U-joints out of it, um, as you can see over here. And that is, uh, we're going to replace those. I'm going to go run to the parts store and get those for the next portion of the video. The other thing, there's a couple spots underneath the truck that were still kind of ugly. And uh, because we were painting the drive shaft, had a uh, paintbrush out, decided to take care of some of the stuff underneath here. And uh, then we moved on to the back. So back here, got the rear brake lines pretty well taken care of, and uh, I ran into one snag with this. So these brake lines are off of that differential that I have sitting over there underneath the sea -Doo. And uh, you can see that they generally fit pretty well, but uh, the 14 bolts, this guy, this hose is supposed to be in the center here. So um, that didn't go exactly as planned, but uh, it still works, except this flare nut over here um, that I'm kind of pointing to with the light, that one does not line up and uh, it just kind of gets tight and then gets loose again. So it's almost like the nuts damaged or something like that. So I'm going to have to uh, get a flaring kit because I don't own one of those because I like to not own rusty junk that doesn't have good brake lines. I'm going to uh, have to flare a new nut onto that. And uh, other than that, then we will be done with uh, brake lines on this truck. So everything's looking good. Got the rubber lines torqued down, banjos and crush fittings are all tight. Um, you can see the rear axle was also one of the things that needed a little touch up on it, um, along with the fuel tank-ish cross member guy, and uh, a couple other spots that I ended up missing and uh, couldn't get to with the paint gun. So with that being said, uh, I can't cross anything off my list other than like paint the drive shaft um but that's okay because uh we're making progress nonetheless and this truck's going to be really nice once uh we do get done with it so i really appreciate you watching until now i will see you guys another day probably tomorrow when i come back to get some more work done Alrighty, friends we are back for day two of this video um got here in the shop it's nice and warm i'm ready to work 
Uh, the truck and everything that we kind of touched up yesterday with the KBS rust coating is looking really good. It looks like it's dried really nice and uh, it looks like it was applied well. Um, here's the drive shaft and uh, this looks really nice. Now I did stop at O'Reilly's this morning and uh, got some new U-joints for the front drive shaft. So we're gonna get that thrown together first thing here and uh, get all pressed up, get it back in the truck and uh, move on to the next thing, which I hope is intercooler clamps. Alrighty, so here I am working on uh, getting the new U-joints pressed into this drive shaft, and uh, I decided to start with the harder of the two, which I think is the section that goes into the transfer case. Uh, this would be technically the rear part of the front drive shaft, and uh, this is harder in my opinion because it's got four joints that are all connected together instead of just two on the front, uh, or like on the front, but uh, I've always been taught that these things should go in fairly easy, um, so you can do it with a hammer, or I like to do it with a vise because it makes uh, it makes sure that they're going in level and flat. When you're wailing on them with a hammer, it's kind of harder to tell if they're actually flat or if they're kind of going in crooked or not. Um, some people prefer the hammer method though because uh, you're not going to bend any ears on the drive shaft or anything like that. And I respect that too. I've used both methods and uh, on this drive shaft I did use the hammer method when I had a couple that were kind of bound up. And they need a little shocking to go into their final destination. Alrighty, well we started to install this guy and uh, I'm going to say that that right there is not heavy duty. Um, going out on a limb to say that, but uh, I guess at least we got two. We can get one of them in and I'm going to have to take that back to the store and uh, see if they can help me out with the new one. So as you saw in the time lapse, uh, second time stayed together. Didn't blow the ends out of that joint so uh, this side near the transfer case is complete and uh, I'll have to go to the parts store to grab the replacement for this end but uh, everything went together okay the internal circlips uh, or snap rings are kind of a pain in the butt um, and getting them equally flush on both sides is also kind of a pain in the butt but I think I got it um, the second side definitely didn't snap in like a, you know the easy you can clearly hear that it snapped in. So I fiddled with that for probably an hour, which is uh, really stupid and uh, I don't like it, but uh, they look like they're sitting flush and uh, hopefully it doesn't explode on me. Next up on the list was intercooler piping. And this is something that just takes time to do. You wanna make sure that your pipes are all lined up and you also wanna make sure that you're actually putting the clamp on the portion of the pipe that will prevent it from blowing off. Um, I know we've all seen videos of intercooler clamps and boots uh, breaking and couplings flying off and so I was trying my best to really take my time and also make sure that my clamps looked really nice. Um, I didn't want a bunch of crooked clamps or uh, ragged clamps or the T-bolts uh, hanging out in front of God and everyone so I took my time to make sure that they were nice and hidden and looked nice and concise. So here we are, just finished up uh, all the intercooler clamps on the truck, um, which took me quite a while, to be honest, uh, much longer than I wanted it to. And there's two reasons for that. I wanted it to look really nice. And also I wanted to make sure that all the um, rolled edges were actually within the clamps and that this was gonna be structural. And I guess there's a third reason I did tighten up all the bolts involved with the intercooler. So everything is really solid. And when I'm moving this intercooler, which is also moving the camera and that probably looks awful, but uh, the rest of the truck kind of moves along with it. So I'm pretty happy with that. The only thing that I'm not super content with is this joint right here, this um, pipe kind of comes up and then angles over and it doesn't seem like there's enough angle to it um, or there's too much angle up at the elbow by the throttle body because this clamp just hangs off a little bit to get the rolled edge, to catch the rolled edge right there. And then on the backside, it's kind of just cockeyed um, and you can just barely see that back in there. So overall, uh, it's together. It should be sealed up i'm pretty confident so with that being said we can come over to our next steps list and we can get rid of the intercooler clamps and intercooler cold side piping 
So I think one of the next things I'm going to move on to is this fuse box slash fan wires. Um, I'm going to start cleaning up the fuse box and getting that all put back together the way it's supposed to look. So I moved on to the fan wiring here and uh, I have two wires that are messed up. This guy completely doesn't have a connector and he's nice and green um, like a sunken ship. So uh, he needs to get stripped back and we need to find some good wire in there. And then this blue one, <clears throat> I just marked it before I pulled it out. Um, but he's got some corrosion on the end of him that I'd like to clean up and make sure that uh, that's all good. So we got two that we're working with. Um, these are really easy to pull out. There's just a little tab up here at the top that you push up on, and then you can push the pin through. So um, this is the one that's completely not connected anymore. We got some chip wreck corrosion going on here. So I need to see if I got one of these. I think I do, and uh, we will push forward. So from back in the day, I have some uh, connectors laying around um, when I used to make my own uh, Delphi and Metropack connectors. So here's a female Metropack, and uh, that's what I ended up using. Now it doesn't work perfectly. I had to cut the bottom out of it. There's a little clasp on the back side here, little finger, and I have to cut that out so that this all works correctly and it looks like that where there's a void in the back this blue one is fixed and so is this blue one with the white paint on it it is also fixed so everything's looking good uh we're all through on the other sides here and uh they're making connection with the relays so we're gonna stab this thing back together and wipe it off the whiteboard so i was just gonna put this fuse box together and try and forget about it and i just found a wire that is hanging on for the last of its life. So I have no clue what that powers. Uh, I got no clue where it goes or what it does, but I'm gonna fix it. Alrighty, so this is where we're gonna leave day two of this video. I don't think this is where I'm gonna wrap it up. I'd like to get that drive shaft in. And once I get that in, that's where I'm gonna wrap it. So um, I got the fuse box and the fan wires complete. Um, I got that one straggler that I found that was damaged done as well. So. Um, intercooler piping took way longer than expected and the wire fan wiring and stuff um, that's what we got today so i will see you next time i'm gonna go return that uh u-joint hopefully that take it back i guess we'll find out and uh get a replacement we'll slap that in tomorrow and get the front drive shaft in boys and girls we're back in the shop it's day three or day four day six i don't even know uh we are here we're gonna get some work done i have a new u-joint all right, let's get this freaking drive shaft knocked out. Boom. Here I am throwing the front drive shaft in the truck. On my truck specifically, I have to remove the transmission cross member to get that front drive shaft in. So I dropped that down and uh, got the front drive shaft all figured out. I did end up having new U-joint straps for the front. So those were nice and they fit very well. Then I moved on to getting the transmission uh, cross member mount all tightened up. So I started in the center and uh, tightened up the two nuts that go on the isolator and then uh, moved over to the left and right hand side of that cross member and got the four 21 millimeter bolts and nuts tightened down and everything was looking pretty good.
So just checking back in with you, I got the front drive shaft in and it looks really nice. It's uh, all painted up, kind of matches everything else. A little bit of rust on uh, where the U-joints go, but honestly, don't care. Uh, it's underneath the truck and it's pretty much never going to be seen, but uh, I just want to do it a little justice. Rest of the truck's nice and black, get that blacked out too. So cross member bolts are tight, transmission mount uh, isolator is tight, other side's tight. Uh, drive shafts in, front U-joint bolts are tight, cables in, cable brackets tight. So, with that being said, we can come over here, we can go like this, a boom, and we can come down my little arrow and go, a boom, right there. So, that's awesome. Alrighty, so my drive shaft guy stopped by today, and we finally have a rear drive shaft, which is awesome. Um, I need to order some new U-joint uh, clips um, because these ones are from that 10 bolt that I have over there underneath the c -Doo and it, the bolt holes don't line up. So need to order a new one of those, um, but this is awesome. Looks really good. So I think this is going to kind of officially conclude this portion of the video. It's like a three-day video. And uh, honestly, I am going to keep working here today, but I'm going to move on to a new section of the project. And I would like to uh, make a separate video for that. So this is pretty much going to be uh, drive shafts and drive line stuff and a little bit of intercooler clamps. But uh, that's about all I could get done, which realistically seems like a very small amount. But man, it took me some time. So I really appreciate you watching this video. Um, I really appreciate the support on the channel. Thank you for everyone that watches and uh, is interested in this project. So I will see you in the next one. Thanks again. Till next time. Peace.